Welcome to the Equinity Podcast, where horse owners just like you share their incredible Equinity stories and how Equinity is changing their horses' lives. Whether you're searching for something to give your performance horse better focus, faster recovery, and more stamina, or in the extreme case where all hope seems lost, give your horse what it needs to help heal at a cellular level, you'll find it here. So jump in on today's episode to hear how Equinity is helping horses worldwide. Now, welcome your host, John Dowdy. Hello and welcome to this week's Equinity Podcast. We are swinging out into the big state of Texas. We've got Melissa Smallhorst on the line this week. Melissa, welcome to the Equinity Podcast. Hello, I'm Melissa. I'm very excited to to be here and talk about, you know, my experience with the product and my and share my story about how it's really helped my horses. Great. Well, it's exciting to have you on. And before we actually even get into that, we kind of came across our paths uh, through Facebook and we spoke over the phone and I think it would be very interesting and beneficial for a lot of people just to know a little bit of your background. You grew up around horses and then you did our country proud and served in the military. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, just talk a little bit about what you did in the military because it's, uh, we'll say, very unique. Well, I was an explosive dog handler. Like I said, I grew up around horses and animals, dogs. You know, I started riding when I was nine years old. I actually went to college for animal science and was on the equestrian team, rodeo team. And I decided to do something beyond my limits. And I decided to join the United States United States Air Force. And I joined as a, a law enforcement and then I went in, and about a year in, I applied for K-9 and worked my tail off to get into there, went through a board and all that. And then I spent the remainder of my 10 years as a dog handler. And then, you know, I served multiple times overseas during Operation New Dawn, Operation uh, during Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. And I handled four dogs. Uh, one, three were bomb dogs, one was a drug dog. And then I served as a trainer over other teams deploying. Then I got to Texas, and I started training dogs for all branches of the military. Throughout my military career, I still, like uh, when I was up in Montana, I still was around horses to, you know, keep me going and stuff like that because I had a lot of horses for the military, and, of course, I had to sell them all when I, you know, went overseas. So I just, you know, kept riding and, you know, guiding hunts, guiding trail rides, stuff like that, riding through other ranchers. And then uh, I got injured a few times, and I got medically retired, and— I bought some land down in Texas here and decided to, you know, homestead here. And I just got back into it and, you know, and I bought a piece of land and just wanted to go back into my roots. And so that's where I'm at now. And so, Wow. That is impressive. And thank you so much for your uh, service. And of course, you just went in, uh, no pun intended, but guns are blazing when you went into uh, bomb squad with dogs. Holy smokes. Yeah, it's a. It was a quite the experience. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of times I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I got myself into, but you know, <laughs> you know, uh, my dog, one of my dogs actually retired with me when I retired. Her name is Betty. We call her Crazy Betty, and she's going to be 11 in May, and oh, wow. she's 11 going on too because yeah. she's still wild as can be and tries to eat everything and still thinks she's looking for bombs in the house. Oh my but, gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah. well. And so, That's pretty awesome. Well, so that must've been quite a, uh, quite a change coming back and selling down on some quiet land in Texas. It's a bit of an adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, 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 very, very much so. And, uh, you know, uh, I actually, when I got out, I kind of went, through a dark time a little bit just because like I said guns blazing and all of a sudden my life is that I felt like it was about a halt mm -hmm. you know and and uh, I actually went and got with an organization it's called Charlie Five it's another nonprofit that helps uh, first responders and uh, veterans and that's where I got my Mustang Cooper and we basically went to rehab together to kind of you know as a Mustang he didn't trust you know trust anybody and and, you know, I had to build a bond with him. And and um, and so that was my first horse on this property. And he, he's an amazing horse now. I mean, and I'm not going to lie. I mean, I I broke a lot of horses, you know, training and riding. And he was probably one of my toughest ones. But I tell you what, now we're, you know, pretty inseparable. So, <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, Charlie Five was the one that got me that you know horse, and you know we that's when we start talking about the unit and stuff, how you know how we got started. Sure. So, yeah. So as you're adjusting to life back in Texas, and you know you kind of just go back to your roots of horse training, and so. Tell us about the horse that you acquired and what was going on with this horse injury-wise. Uh, tell us about that, what you were dealing with. So I always had a dream of owning a cutting horse, and they were way out of my my pocket range. And and uh, I saw this horse advertised on Facebook, and of course, you know, they weren't recent pictures, but he was a buckskin stallion. Fair, you know, people say don't look at a color, but it was my favorite color. <laughs> he, you know, he was uh, professionally trained in cutting. He's older. I mean, granted, he was, he's, you know, he's 17 years old. But, you know, I just wanted a horse that, you know, I can go sorting on and all that. So, of course, I traveled five hours to go get him. And when they pulled him out of the paddock, I was like, ooh, that's not, <laughs> this definitely doesn't look like the picture. <laughs> he was, what? You mean they changed the picture <laughs> on you? <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, he, he he was definitely a buckskin, but he his his coat was so bad. You know, he he had a horrible injury, and he was just skin and bones. And I and I'll be honest, I you know I paid nine hundred bucks for the horse, mm-hmm. and compared to you know a ten thousand dollar reject cutting horse, right. you know, and so I was like, you know what, I traveled this whole way. I mean, yeah, nine hundred dollars is a lot, but I think I can you know get this horse recovered. But when I looked at his his back leg, it looked like um, a barbed wire looked like got wrapped around his leg, and uh, you know, I, I, he was lame. And I was like, oh, do I really want to buy a lame horse? And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll just I'll just buy him. You know, I put him in a trailer and I vetted him the next day because you know it was on the weekend. Well, I took him to the vet and she stuck her finger in that in that hole and basically says going to the joint. And everybody knows once a horse has a joint infection, I mean, you basically don't have a horse anymore. Right. And she said, Well, I can refer you to Ratama and the last I heard their intake was four thousand dollars and the last time I heard they were treating a joint infection, it was close to fifteen thousand. And I was like, with that kind of money, I could buy me a, a finished cutting horse. No doubt. And so I was like, oh, my gosh. Well, let me just treat it conservatively and, and clean it out every day. I had to make sure it wasn't going to scar up on the outside in case it got sick to the inside. And that that's where I'll, you'll get the joint infection. So, of course, I was cleaning it out. You know, and I just did a lot of research online for supplements and I didn't necessarily want to buy, you know, 20 supplements for this horse. And, you know, for, well, his coat was horrible. His feet were horrible. His joints were horrible. So I was like, well, I, I saw yours. And so I was like, well, let me, let me just give it a try. It's got, you know, the amino acids and the muscle repair uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, what, what was the uh, prognosis the vet was giving you here? Uh, well, basically, it was going to be, he, she said it was going to be within a week. She told me this horse was going to go downhill from joint infection. And so that's when I was, you know, I kind of was like, well, I just bought dead horse, basically. You know, because she was even saying, we'll know within a week if we need to euthanize them. Because I don't got four to $15,000 to spend. And so that's when I got your product. And like I said, I cleaned it out every day. And you could see like it was trying to scab up, but then it was still start oozing and you could see that joint fluid coming out. Oof. And so I'm like, this is, this is going to be bad. So that's when I got him on your product. And within a week, it, I, it was it just, you have to see the pictures. Like it was just amazing. <laughs> so I took him to another vet just to get second eyes on. And he was like, most of this, horse doesn't have joint infection it's healed you just let it heal and you know do its thing now as a wound and i'm like so he doesn't have joint infection and he goes no listen he doesn't have joint infection and i said well can we do an x-ray just to make sure and he's like i mean if you want to waste your money sure we can do an x-ray yeah. but there's i'm telling you three things the reason why he doesn't have joint infection one i can't I, when i stick my finger in there i can't you know, it, it, I can't get my finger through the skin. 
and he's not lame and his joints not swollen and he doesn't have a fever. He doesn't have joint infection, Melissa. And so I'm like, holy moly. And so I just, you know, I still took care of it and let it heal. And I'll tell you what, the other day I threw a saddle on him and it's like it's never happened. Oh, and that's just a couple of weeks. And the vet that originally diagnosed it called me up to check on him. And I told her, and she, she was amazed the horse is still alive. Like, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I it healed up. You know, he that's never, cool. uh, like I said, I mean, the, the, just the general appearance of the horse has changed. I mean, I, 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 like I said, you, I sent you before and after, and I'm just amazed how he came with this shaggy coat that I couldn't get off. And it was just dull. And now he just looks like a golden buckskin. Like he's just straight up gold. Oh, man. Um, that is insane. Yeah, now, so. for those of you tuning in, we're talking with Melissa out of Texas. Uh, she's a retired military uh, canine bomb squad, so don't mess with her. And a uh, horse trainer, we're talking about this horse that she acquired, and it ended up being a lot worse than what she had planned for. But So now we are on three weeks of Equinity Horse Excel, which for those of you, maybe this is the first time you're hearing about the Equinity Horse Excel, it's 100% pure amino acids. There's no fillers, no sugars, no starches, and there's no loading dose. And and with this particular horse, an open wound going down to the joint and was worried, well, basically had a week possibly to live. And now you're riding the horse in three weeks. And the, the how, what's the wound look like now? Well, it's, it's healed. Oh, <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't even, I mean, I've had people literally come over and was like, they don't even look like the same horse. Yeah. Like, like I said, the wound is completely healed over. I mean, is there, like I said, when, it, when you can tell the joint fluid coming out and because even when it would scab up, like try to scab up over, and I was trying to keep that from happening because I didn't, I wanted to keep it clean inside. And you would, you would push on the scab and you could the fluid still coming out and so I'm like oh my gosh it's still in the joint you know yep. and so it, I, I would panic and so like I said once I got him on the supplement it was just it like within a couple of days I can already see a difference yeah that's um, there was no infection no infection I even had a friend who was a who was an actual doctor human doctor and she came over and said well, this is not even expected and she came over yesterday and was like wow it doesn't even doesn't even look the same you know, and so I've treated a lot of wounds in my life. I would imagine, yeah. And I've never seen something heal so fast, like, and heal so clean. That is, that usually sometimes you run into infection or swelling or a fever or, or something, and I didn't run into any of that. And yeah. this horse is 17 years old. Sure. I would, I would attribute a lot of that to the to the care that you're giving. I mean, as much as you can give, but going to the product itself, you know, the, the amino acids in this product are specifically combined to stimulate the pituitary gland, which releases the necessary hormones, which help the body repair from the inside out. So, and that's what's really what, in this case, was very important because you needed it to heal from the inside out, not from the outside in, because that would mm -hmm. just be problematic but in every case we've been on the market now a little over five years with this particular product and in every scenario that i've heard dealing with an injury and this we've ha seen some pretty pretty bad ones but i would say they have all healed ahead of schedule these particular wounds you know it's but you know again you're we're giving the body what it needs to help repair itself from the cellular level so that's exactly what this one did and I tell people all the time it's not a miracle supplement, but you hear stories like this, and you're like, okay, that's on the verge of. <laughs> well, though, another thing that I realized with him, and even I have friends pointed out, and look at the picture of when I got him, and then you look, and I'd like to take another picture 30 days after. You can see his veins, like, pop out. Like, even people are like, man, he's very, he's got a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. and, like, he's just yoked. <laughs> you can see that even his muscles are starting to build back up because he had no muscle tone when I got him. And granted, like I said, I haven't been riding them. I, I rode them slowly the other day, just uh, walk trot here and there. 
And then, you know, I'll lunge him a couple times just to make sure I get his blood flowing because, you know, I want him to be completely sound. But you can just tell, like, he just got all these veins. Like, you can just see he's building muscle back up from this. And it started when I started the product. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it's just, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I can't, I don't, you know, I'm just astounded because I've used a ton of supplements and I just never seen the result as fast as they did, especially with an older horse. And so, yeah, that's, we're blessed. We, uh, that is one of the reasons I started this podcast because I would have conversations with people and I would just in my mind, I'm like, I cannot believe what I'm hearing right now. And, it, and at the time, I was thinking, man, that's a real shame that I'm the only one hearing this story outside of your circle. So that's why I started the podcast so other people could hear these stories. And it's just not me trying to retell the story. So it's uh, that, mm-hmm. that is that is pretty darn awesome. So for nine hundred dollars on a horse that uh, didn't have much of uh, hope. Three weeks later, you're now riding this horse, and it, it might be your dream cutting horse. Really? Yeah, I mean, I can tell he's got potential. I got cattle out here, and he's already ready to work. He goes out there, pins his ears, and grits his feet. So I'm like, get ready, boy, once you're completely sound. I mean, he's sound. I just, like I said, he's you know an older horse, and I just want to slowly work him back up to that. And so, yeah. but I, I, I am excited just to, because, you know, I see him every day. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm seeing one thing, but then when I have other people come over and that's why I took a picture before I uh, started the product so I could see the difference. And I, like I said, I sent you that picture in two weeks and you could just see like in two weeks, you could barely see a rib on them. Yeah. That's incredible. Yep. Now at our website at teamequinity.com, where this podcast will be published, Below the podcast, we'll have all of this transcribed. We'll also have pictures, uh, the before and after pictures. So we'll have it at before you started at two weeks and then at 30 days. So that'll be a pretty pretty nice uh, before and afters. There's contrast of what what this product is doing, how much it's helped. Now, anything else that you've noticed uh, in this time frame with uh, the coat, the hooves, anything like that? Happier, you know, demeanor-wise? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very perky. <laughs> Even in this, you know, paddock that he's in, because granted, he's still a stallion and he's separate from everybody. He's just very, you know, a lot of, inner, you know, a lot more energy. You know, even, you know, when I first got him, like he was just very, uh, uh, well, for one, he was injured. But, he, he you know, he just woke, you know, had his, had his head down. And then, uh, you know, I tried to just get him to lunge just to kind of, you know, stretch his legs out from being at the paddock. And he, he just wasn't motivated, you know, mm-hmm. and just now, I mean, you know, he's just, he's just rearing to go. Like, he's just like, man, you know, he's just, you know, he just seems like a happier horse. I mean, I know that sounds silly, but, you no, know, he's just, uh, yeah. you know, you just, I'm telling you, he's not even the same horse. And I guarantee the previous owner would probably really like to have him back. But <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so, so they can resell it to uh, you for like 10 grand, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, there's a reason why he was $500, but. Like, every, I mean, everybody probably hearing this is like, yeah, no cheap horse is cheap. Yeah. And so, you know, and I, yeah, and I figured it was too good to be true. But, but I mean, like I said, I, he's about, he's turned to 180. And, uh, like I said, I hope the people actually see the pictures because, uh, I mean, I was even blown away because, like I said, I see him every day. Yeah. But when I saw the pictures, I was like, holy moly, this right. is a big difference. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, on another note, uh, one of the other things that you've recently started is a nonprofit, Southern Tech or South Texas Mounted Search and Rescue. Tell us about that. What was the motivation behind it, and kind of what that's all about, and how you're helping other veterans as well. So, like I said before, when I got Cooper, you know, I was just real stagnant when I got out. I wanted to you continue to utilize my riding skills, my dog handling skills. And so I started a nonprofit for other veterans to ser- continue serving their community and still feel like they have a purpose. And so I started the search and rescue unit south with our South Texas, now a search and rescue down in Divine, Texas. We serve on the border. We serve on the 
you know, look into for deceased immigrants to ID with our cadaver dogs alongside our horses. And we actually train our cadaver dogs on foot and my little Kelpie to, you know, basically search alongside my horse because she's got so much stamina. But yeah, I, I wanted to, to start this program to continue serving my community, to continue having a purpose. And so I got Cooper and a couple other horses and a couple other veterans to certify on uh, their horses for Mounted Star Tech. And then, of course, we have our cadaver dogs, which we certify through uh, International Working Dog Association. And um, and so that's basically, I also was looking at, you know, your product to put our, our search horses on there, too, as well, because they're going for miles on end in this heat mm-hmm. and I, and also I need, you know, I need the stamina and, and, you know, they, unfortunately horses do get injured. And so after I saw the results with this, you know, 17 year old stallion that basically had a death wish, I was like, Oh man, I got to put all these horses on this, <laughs> right. you know? And so, and that's when I, you know, reached out to you just to tell you, hey, you know, this is an amazing product. And so. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the a typical day like when you're out doing search and rescue? I know every day is probably a little bit different depending on what you're doing. But uh, what are some of the things that you're doing as far as my, uh, coverage, mile-wise? How do your dogs rest during all of that? Tell us, give us an idea of what that feels like or looks like. So, you know, like I said, it just depends on a search. The horses are primarily used to cover large areas. I can't go into, like, exact detail on what I've been on just because some of them are, you know, criminal cases. Because sure. we, we are only deployed through law enforcement. I can't just go out and be like, oh, hey, somebody's got a missing kid. Let me go look for them. Right, no, right. I have to wait for law enforcement to have a need for us. Mm-hmm. and. Our dogs are used a lot, especially in small areas, you know, crime scenes. But when it comes to large areas and we need a lot of coverage, that's when the horses come. And I don't use every dog alongside the horses just because, you know, most of the other dogs are either, you know, German Shepherds or, you know, Belgian Malinois. And they just, yeah, the the Malinois have a lot of stamina, but they tend to overheat. So like you said, we have to... Make sure it's, you know, early in the morning or late in the evening. Dogs get the rest probably 30, you know, every 30 minutes. But what I've been using is an Australian Kelpie. And, you know, they're originally from, of course, Australia. And there's not many in the United States. And I have worked up in Montana with these little guys and have gone, you know, 30, 40 miles in a day, no problem. Oh, gosh. A lot, yeah, along, alongside my horse. And so... I decided to use the Australian Kelpie in South Texas because they're heat resistant and they have a lot of stamina and they have a heck of a nose. And so I decided to to start, you know, my little girl, uh, Oakley, alongside my horse because, you know, she works very well. She takes commands from the horses or, or from me on the horse, excuse me. But she'll rather work than drink water. I have to be careful with that. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know, or she'll find a stock tank and just jump in there or something. But, you know, and like I said, we've got on the border a few times with her and, and they're just amazing little dogs. And you got to think we got mesquite down here. We got cactus, we got cockaburs, all that. And these guys just run through it like nothing, wow. you know, which my German shepherd's like, no, I'm going around. <laughs> now, <And> so, <laughs> one of the things that you told me I thought was fascinating. So when this little dog is, as he's running around or she's running around and gets tired, she hops up on your horse and just rides for a while to rest. And then yeah, just, she just rides, she just rides with me and my horse. I got pictures of her. Jump, she'll literally jump up on the horse in my lap and she'll just, she'll just stand there until she's ready to go back to work. And so, and horses are fine with it and she's <laughs> fine with it. So that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, the uh, and the little Mustang that I use, I, I really, cause I have, I have uh, uh, two quarter horses, a Mustang and a Halflinger on the team. Uh, I have another veteran who uses the Halflinger. But the Mustang, wow, they got so much stamina. Like, that's, that's my go-to horse when it comes to search and rescue just because they just, they got so much stamina. They're sure-footed. 
and they're very um what i say they're prey animals mm-hmm. like they're so they're very more alert and if there's a person out in the woods or something and i see my horse turn his head or his ears perk up i'll stop for a minute and listen and that's usually how we train we'll put people out in the woods and see how our horse is alert to somebody out in the woods and we'll follow where our horse is looking and so the mustang in my opinion is has been the best just because they are prey animals. I've always lived on basically the edge and they're just more alert to what's going on in their surroundings, which most of my quarter horses are just, yeah, I'm just going to keep walking. <laughs> well, and I tell you, I was on your website. Give us your website, by the way, real quick. It's uh, South Texas Mounted SAR, S A R. Great. Dot I- org. Dot org. Okay. And I'll have that below this podcast. But I was when I was on your website, one of the things is I was reading through, and of course, when you're not in the business of search and rescue, there's certain things that you don't know that you don't know or never even thought about, which one of the things that I found interesting, you know, you were comparing horse to an ATV, which, you know, you can cover mm-hmm. a lot more ground with an ATV, but they're noisy. So you're going to give your position up versus the horse is alert and, you know, doing what you were just describing, you know, being able to hear things and they're prey animals. So they've got to be on alert all the time. So just a couple of yes, things I found pretty interesting there. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to that? Um, Cause. Uh, no, I, like I said, I, I, you know, I think we've covered, covered the bases, but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it was, uh, like I said, it's, it's been a, a pleasure. And I, like I said, I'm excited to continue using this product. So. Absolutely. Well, uh, Melissa Schmallhorst out of Divine, Texas, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story and thank you for your service to our country and everything and uh, appreciate you being here on the Equinity Podcast. Thank you so much. That's all for this episode of the Equinity Podcast. For more information on purchasing Equinity, be sure to visit our website at teamequinity.com, where you'll also find product information as well as more testimonials on how others have seen amazing results by implementing Equinity into their horse's supplement regime. We'll have more stories on how Equinity is helping horses worldwide right here on a future episode of the Equinity Podcast.